Hi guys, I'm Phoebe, and welcome back to my channel. I'm a third year student from the University of Hong Kong, and I'm studying mathematics and finance. In today's video, I'm going to show you something that plays an important part in my university life. My iPad. Now we all know iPad is a useful tool providing us with lots of functions and applications. While we enjoy the convenience it offers, it is also easier for us to get distracted because of this convenience. In this video, I want to share with you my knowledge and experience of using iPad. As someone who's been using this device for more than two years, I hope I can provide you with some useful tips and ideas of how to use it more effectively and avoid distractions. The video will be divided into three main parts. First, I'll introduce you to my iPad and some useful accessories. Then I'll dive into various methods for improving productivity using your iPad, including some fantastic apps that I've discovered along the way. Finally, I'll share effective strategies for reducing distractions while using your iPad, so you can stay focused and make the most out of your study or work sessions. First, let's talk about my iPad. I'm currently using the iPad Pro 12.9 inch 5th generation with 256GB of storage. Now, you might be wondering why I chose this model and how I feel about it now. Well, I'm going to spill all the details. When I was looking at different models in 2022 in the Apple Store, I found that I actually need an iPad for note taking and reading. That's why the large screen of 12.9 inch iPad Pro caught my attention at that time, especially when I discovered its multi screen function. This feature allows me to seamlessly view information on one app while taking notes on another. Now with iOS 17, there is even a stage manager mode to see more than two screens at the same time, and you can change the size and the position of the screen quite conveniently. Although it's heavier and more expensive than other models, for me, the advantages outweigh these drawbacks. I highly recommend going to the Apple Store to have an in-person comparison to check which one better suits your needs. Another consideration is storage. I chose 256 GB, but now I slightly regret about it because I also use the iPad for video editing. Over time, I've received lots of notifications asking me to clean up unnecessary files. If you are not considering to process large amount of videos or audios on your iPad, I feel like 256 GB is more than sufficient. Just for your reference, after using my iPad for note taking on GoodNotes almost every day for over two years, the storage used by GoodNotes is only around 15.94 GB and WeChat, my primary app for communication and file transmission, takes up about 12.67 GB. So keep this in mind when making your purchase decision. Moving on to accessories, let's talk about the essentials. The Apple Pencil and AirPods. I've been using the original Apple Pencil and iPods for over two years now, and they are still going strong. These accessories have become an integral part of my workflow, whether it's for sketching, annotating documents, or enjoying my favorite tunes for a short break. But you can always find alternatives from other brands if the price of the Apple Pencil and AirPods from Apple Store is too much for you. For iPad cases and covers, I have personally used three different models and I will show them to you today for better comparison, so you don't need to pay extra money on them. The first one is a professional looking case I purchased from an offline Apple store for around $90. While it looks really professional, it is expensive and it does not have a shield to protect your Apple Pencil. Considering the price of the Apple Pencil, it's a risk I wasn't willing to take. Next, we have a budget-friendly option that I found online for less than $15. The quality is surprisingly good and it even includes a small cover to protect your Apple Pencil. 
If you are looking for a cost-effective and useful case or cover, I highly recommend checking out online shops. Other than the Apple Store, there are many alternatives. After using my iPad for several months, I realized that it would be even more beneficial to have a keyboard so that I can type my essays on the iPad without needing to carry my computer every day. That's why I decided to buy a set of cover and keyboard, priced around $30. I highly recommend this option if your work involves a lot of text and typing. Having a keyboard attached to your iPad can greatly enhance your efficiency and eliminate the need to carry both a bulky computer and an iPad. Also, as the keyboard is detachable, you can always put it on the other side if you want to take handwriting notes. After providing the information about the device and accessories, let's talk about how can we maximize the benefit of using iPad. I will share some tips and apps that I found particularly useful in enhancing productivity and streamlining my workflow. It will be about two important sectors, time management and note-taking. One app that has proved to be a lifesaver to me is actually Reminders. I've tried many different paid and free apps like uh, Notion or Tomato To-Do List for time management. Although they worked well at the beginning, but um, after a period of time, I didn't open them at all. And eventually, I discovered this free and convenient alternative. Reminders offers several benefits. First, you can easily write your to-do list and set priorities or flags. You can also categorize tasks belonging to the same list. For example, you can create a list for case competitions and add all related tasks to it. This helps you to better trace a big project by dividing it into several ones. Second, you can set reminders for different times and change the time quite conveniently. You can set a future time for exams and deadlines. You can also use it to keep track of unfinished tasks from the past ensuring you don't forget about them. You can set repeating tasks to cultivate a habit simply by customizing your repeat setting. If the time of a task to be finished needs to be adjusted, you can simply drag the task between different dates. What's more, you can attach links or photos to your to-do list, providing additional context and information. Say your professor recommends reading an article and shares a reading list during class. You can simply copy the URL and take a screenshot, then add them to your to-do list. It's way more convenient than relying on multiple apps or notes scattered across different platforms. Reminders works well in conjunction with another app, Calendar. You can easily drag tasks from Reminders to Calendar and assign them a specific time. This allows you to have a better understanding of the time you have available and helps you manage and estimate your time more effectively. The dragging feature is not limited to tasks from reminders. You can also drag text from other apps and create events with specific times. Additionally, creating recurring events for your course timetable in calendar can be a lifesaver for university students. I used it at the beginning of each semester to plan out my week and stay more organized. Next, let's talk about note-taking. As a student who needs to frequently write down good ideas, take notes, and do assignments, having a reliable note-taking app is super, super crucial to me. Today, I'll compare three apps I used for taking notes, Good Notes, Notion, and Notes. Each of them caters for different purposes. The primary app is GoodNotes. GoodNotes is particularly useful for taking handwritten notes. It offers different templates and many styling features for you to take notes. It also allows you to input, annotate, organize, and export PDF files, making it a suitable place to store PowerPoint slides from professors or assignments for your classes. I have created a detailed video on the different functions of GoodNotes. Feel free to watch it if you are interested. The second app is Notion. Notion is more suitable for typed notes. It allows for perfect formatting for users. 
You can easily change the text size, add bulleted lists, numbered lists, or toggle lists. Notion also offers additional features for better presentation, like quotes, dividers, and callouts. With flexible indentation in Notion, you can simply click the arrow button to adjust the indentation level. Another great thing about Notion is that it allows you to create highly flexible structures for learning, collaboration, tracking improvements, and so on. You can create your own structure, such as the one I created for learning grammar, reciting vocabulary, and writing tutorial feedback. Or use the existing templates provided by Notion, such as class notes, the Cornell note system, blogs, and so on. The last one is Notes. Unlike the previous two apps, Notes is completely free and included in the default settings of the iPad. Although it doesn't have as many fancy functions as other apps, it excels in speed and convenience. You can quickly open it whenever you have inspiring ideas to write down and your notes will synchronize quickly between your phone and iPad if they are both from Apple. I tried using Notes to create chapter notes for my derivative class, and the experience was not bad. You can easily change the indentation by swiping the line. This feature is just for notes, and it's super, super smooth and reassuring. And you can add a to-do button as a checklist function to keep track of whether you have reviewed a particular knowledge point or not. Additionally, Notes allows you to insert quick drawings, photos, and tables enabling you to include all the information that cannot be easily typed. After comparing these note-taking apps, let me share with you two general functions that I found particularly useful when taking notes. They may sound a little bit trivial, but I've realized that many of my friends are not aware of them. First, text extraction from photos. If you want to extract the text from a photo in a video, you can easily do it by taking a screenshot and then clicking the scanning button. Now you can copy the text by long pressing it. This saves you from manually typing the text from the photo. Second, keyboard shortcuts. When typing notes, you can select the text you want to format and press and hold the command key along with the letter B to make the text bold, the letter I to make it italic, and the letter U to underline it. If you accidentally delete a file or a sentence, you can always press and hold the command key and the letter Z to restore it. Although iPad provides many functions and apps, like many electronic devices, it inevitably increases distractions. I used to be easily distracted when using iPad as well, constantly switching between different apps and being bothered by notifications, which drained my energy and affected my concentration. How can we solve this problem? Here, I want to share with you four strategies that I have personally found useful. First, separation of distracting apps. To prevent the cultivation of bad habits and avoid them in the first place, we should download fewer social media, shopping, or gaming apps on our iPad. If necessary, download them on your phone instead. It's similar to separating your study room from your bedroom. If there are apps that can be distracting yet useful, such as YouTube for watching educational videos from Phoebe, or WeChat for necessary communication and file transfer, you can reduce their distraction by placing them on a separate page away from your main screen. I didn't realize how useful it is until I tried it for several months and the effect was super good. Many times we don't want to waste our time. We simply click on a distracting app because we want to find some relaxation for like 5 minutes or 10 minutes. But once we open it, we just can't stop scrolling. If these apps are placed on the first page of the home screen, we may open them more frequently and spend more time on them. So by reducing their exposure and using this separation method, you are more likely to access them only when necessary. Second, focus mode. You can use the focus function on your iPad to stay focused and avoid notification. 
You can set your personalized settings like start the focus mode by setting it to automatically turn on when using specific apps. I personally put Good Notes and Notion under this category, making sure I will not be bothered when using these two apps. On the other hand, you can also manually swipe from the top right of the iPad to turn it on when necessary. Third, redesigning your homepage. Redesigning our homepage can make us more purposeful and have a clear understanding of what we are going to do in a day. To customize your iPad homepage, long press the screen to add widgets. Consider adding widgets that you want to see daily or as reminders. For example, I have a widget for my French learning app which displays a new French sentence every day. I also have widgets for reminders and calendar to help me stay focused on my goals and manage my tasks efficiently. Lastly, streamline your tasks. If you want to spend more time on the important things, you need to reduce your time on the trivial things or repetitive chores. I recommend using the free and easily accessible app called Poe. Poe can assist you with simple but repetitive tasks. By simply speaking or typing your request, Poe will generate the required content for you, and it's grammar-free already. Here is an example. I'm going to write an email to Lily, a current employee in HSBC. I'm Phoebe, and I would like to learn more about her experience in working as a portfolio manager in HSBC, and I would like to ask if she could kindly share some tips with me in interview preparation and high view preparation. Please, in this email, mention our similar educational background as a mathematics student in the University of Hong Kong and our similar interests in playing volleyball and basketball. As someone who used to get easily distracted and overwhelmed by lots of functions and apps on the iPad, I have gradually figured out a way of utilizing it more efficiently. I do hope you found today's video useful. And before you leave, here is the link for how I use GoodNotes as a student. Please check it out if you're interested. And see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.